Section 26, capacitors and motors, specifically 26218 to 26222. When we're dealing with capacitors and motors, we have a little bit of leniency when it comes to where we place over currents and disconnects. Specifically, when capacitors are connected to a three-phase motor right at the terminal box, we don't have to have a disconnect, nor do we need discharge resistors. And that's because when the motor is turned off, the capacitors will discharge through the motor winding itself. Now, this also has an effect on the overload sizing. And remember from section 28 that the overloads are based on the full load amps of the motor. And so because of that, if the capacitors are connected right here, the full load amps of the motor will only be present from the point of the capacitor down to the motor. From here up will be the power factor corrected current, which is lower, always lower. And due to that, the overloads will have to be sized to that lower current value. So if we look at this particular installation where we have three different possibilities for where the capacitors could be installed, the first one here, installation A, is typically done where we're going to power factor correct more than just the motor. So in this particular situation, we have our own uh, overcurrent disconnect, and it could also supply power factor correcting leading current upstream. So if this is the case, it means that all of the equipment from here down is all sized as per normal. There is nothing that needs to be oversized or undersized. It has absolutely no effect on the sizing. So this would be a capacitor sized power factor correct the entire facility. If instead we were to install a capacitor here, this is in between the motor controller and the motor branch circuit over current device. Now this is very specific and it is discussed in 26218. So we're on the supply side of the, uh, of the motor controller and on the load side of the motor circuit disconnect. Now, if we follow those rules, you'll notice that we do not need to have our own specific disconnect or over current for this capacitor. And the reason for that is that this is going to adequately provide separation for this capacitor when we uh, turn off the motor. So it's a little bit different. And finally, we have this one here. We install the capacitor to power factor correct the motor only. And again, now we need to start considering what about all of the overloads here? What size are they gonna have to be? It's gonna be a smaller value of current. And because of that, this may have to be sized smaller it, or at least the overloads, I should say, need to be sized smaller in order to properly protect the motor. If we look at all three of these different installations, there is also some pretty specific rules about the discharge resistor, 26222. And you'll notice that we need to have signage and uh, a means of draining that charge. So a discharge resistor would be required on this one. It would also be required on the second installation, but the last one, installation C, it would not be required, and that's because of it discharging through the motor winding itself.